Hello everybody and welcome to the Children and Family Worship from Christ Church United Reformed Church and I'm Sandy Brown, the Children and Family Worker. Let's start by talking to God. Dear Lord Jesus, we come to you full of the busy lives we lead, full of things we want to do and the things we don't. Help us now to relax in your presence as we learn a little more about you and your kingdom. Give us peace, understanding and joy in your word and open our minds, Lord. Amen. So our Bible reading today is from Philippians 2 verses 3 to 4. But before we do that, I have an apology to make. If you watched last week's presentation, you may have noticed that there was no sound for the PowerPoint presentation on Paul. I don't understand exactly what happened and why it didn't work, but I think it's important to understand a bit more about Paul as we continue with his readings, so we will do that now. Paul was originally born Saul around 10 AD. He was born into a Jewish family in the city of Tarsus, which is now in Turkey, and this was part of the Roman Empire and ruled from Rome hundreds of miles away. Saul was brought up speaking Greek, and although he learned other languages during his life, he wrote in Greek. As a young man, Saul was sent to Jerusalem to study with a well-known and respected teacher called Gamaliel. Gamaliel was tolerant of others and expressed moderate opinions, but Saul didn't always agree with his teacher. He was not tolerant of others and got particularly angry with the new followers of Jesus. Saul was a fanatic and wanted to stop these Christians. He even wanted to kill them. He held people's coats as they stoned to death a young Christian called Stephen. But then something extraordinary happened to Saul, something that changed his life forever. He was on his way to Damascus, determined to murder more Christians, when he had an amazing revelation from God. We don't know exactly what took place. Saul himself says that he saw Jesus. In the book of Acts, Luke says that Saul heard the voice of Jesus saying, Saul, Saul, why do you persecute me? Whatever happened, it turned Saul's life upside down. Everything he felt certain about didn't make sense anymore. He had to work out what it meant and what he was supposed to do now. Saul, who after this conversion was known by his Roman name Paul, spent nearly 15 years thinking about what had happened to him, and he finally understood. God had called him to teach people about Jesus, so he spent the rest of his life doing just that. He learned to be a tent maker so he could earn money and support himself. He would talk to people as he worked and tell them about Jesus. Paul lived in many different places and walked huge distances from place to place. Sometimes he travelled by boat and he was shipwrecked more than once. Small groups of people who believed in Jesus began to meet and worship in each other's houses. These groups of people in cities like Corinth and Ephesus were the first churches. Buildings called churches came much later. When Paul moved on to a new place, he wrote letters back to these Christian communities, encouraging them to live in the ways Jesus had taught. Sometimes Paul gave them advice and guidance. Sometimes he told them off for things he'd heard they'd been doing. But he always told them that God loved them and that they were saved through Jesus' death and resurrection. 
The 13 surviving letters that St Paul wrote can be found in the New Testament section of the Bible after the Gospels and the Book of Acts. So our Bible reading, as I said, is from Philippians and it's chapter 2, verses 3 to 4. Do nothing from selfish ambition or conceit, but in humility regard others as better than yourselves. Let each of you look not to your own interests, but to the interests of others. So we're going to praise God now as we sing, and don't forget to join in the actions with me. With me. My God is so big. Are you ready? My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing that he cannot do. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing that he cannot do. The rivers are his, the mountains are his, the stars are his handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing that he cannot do. Should we do that again? <clears throat> My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing that he cannot do. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing that he cannot do. The rivers are his, the mountains are his, the stars are his handiwork too. My God is so big, so strong and so mighty, there's nothing that he cannot do. Ooh, don't know where my voice went then. Okay, so let's look at that Bible passage together. So Paul was asking the Philippians to think of others before themselves, which isn't easy, is it? We are used to putting our own ambitions, our wants and our needs before others to look after ourselves. He asks them to think of others as better than ourselves and to be humble. Hmm. Again, not easy. And he asks them to put others' interests before our own. It's like when you want to watch something on the television and your sister or brother wants to watch something else. Who gets to decide? Perhaps there's a reason they need to watch that particular programme. Maybe for a school project they're doing. It doesn't hurt to stop and think about the consequences of your decisions. If you make a decision, what effect will it have on others? If you decided to watch your programme and not let your sister or brother watch theirs, then maybe they won't be able to get the marks that they need in their schoolwork or they won't be able to even do their schoolwork. Jesus showed us how to do this, to put others before ourselves. He wanted us to be more like him and put our others before ourselves and share whatever we had. Let's always try to ask ourselves, what would Jesus do in this situation, particularly when we've got hard decisions to make? So let's talk to God again now. Lord Jesus, may we always remember the needs and interests of others and put them before ourselves. Amen. And let's do the grace together. Follow me for the actions. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with all of us now and forevermore. Amen. And if you'd like to join in our Sunday Club Zoom session at 11.15, just ask me for the link. You can phone me on 07511-950-633. If you'd like to come along to Sunday Club at church, then you need to give me a ring to book in, um, preferably before the end of the week. That'd be great. Thank you. OK, have a great week. Bye bye.